In PTC MathCAD Prime, you can write programs which will perform a series of operations on data. I like to think of them as functions on steroids. And just to recap functions real quick, if you go to the functions tab, you have a number of built-in functions inside of PTC MathCAD. So for example, here we have our different trigonom trigonometric functions. So for example, I could do a function, hey, the sine of, let's do, 90 degrees equals, and there we have the function that is evaluated. You can also create your own custom functions. For example, I can create one f of x and define this to be equal to x, and then I'll do shift 6 in order to get the exponent, x squared, and this whole thing, where's my plus sign, plus 1. And that way, when I do the function of a number, f of 5, and then evaluate, there it squares it and adds one to it. So that's an example of a user-defined function. But with programs, you can have them do a whole lot more than that. And I often use them for processing data. So for example, if I have an Excel spreadsheet, I will read that into a vector and then can do different processing on that vector and then produce different results. I'm gonna show you an example of creating a program. And the way that you do it is from this dropdown from the MathCAD. And you have a number of different operators in here. And the other day I stumbled across an example that shows a number of these different keywords to you. And so I was thinking about prime numbers and I realized, hey, if a number is not divisible by any of the numbers up to its square root, then it's a prime number. And I figured, hey, that's a way that I can figure out if a number is prime or not. And rather than just returning yes or no whether a number is prime, I want to create a program that'll give me all the prime numbers between a range of different numbers. And so the way that we're going to start off our programming, I'm going to do it over here because I think it might get kind of wide. You're going to type in a name for the variable or for the uh, program. In this case, I'll just call it prime numbers. So it's obvious what it does. And it's going to take two inputs. The first input I'm going to call start, and the last one I will call end. And these are going to be local variables. So they do not have to exist prior to creating the program. They're going to be used inside of the program. It specifies what are the inputs to the program that someone is going to use later on. Then I'm going to use the definition operator to say what the program is. To begin the program, you're going to use this icon over here, and the keyboard shortcut is the right bracket. So this allows you to insert a new program structure. And so there we have the first line there. One thing that I often do is I initialize my variables that I'm going to use inside of here. And what I want this program to do is return a vector of all the prime numbers between start and end. So I'm going to create an index for my vector or matrix, and then I want this to be equal to zero initially. You can't just use the equal sign though. Inside of a program, you're going to use the local assignment operator, which is the left brace, but I always just click on the icon. I'm going to set my index for my vector to be equal to zero. And then I'm going to put in the first element of the vector so that it has something to return inside of here. And this is going to be results. And then I want the matrix operator for the subscript. So I can go to, oops, wrong one, go to this drop down over here. And this is the matrix index, which is also the left bracket. I'm going to have the results index. This is going to be assigned to a value of zero as well. So again, I'll go to the math tab programming, local assignment operator. This is going to be equal to zero. Where you get into the power of these programs is looping and conditionals. So I can have it perform all these operations on the different numbers. So now I'm going to use a for loop and a for loop runs a specified number of times. And here we have the for keyword. Be aware that you can't just type in the letters F-O-R. That will not use it as an operator. I'm, I have to click it from the icon, or you can see the keyboard shortcut. I'll be honest, 
I don't memorize any of these keyboard shortcuts for the programming just because there are a lot of them. All right, so here's my for loop. And this is the symbol for is a member of. And I'm going to create a counter variable called counter. This is the number of times it's going to go through the loop. And I want it to go from the start to the end, my start variable. And then I'm going to use the range variable operator, which is just the period twice, to end. And if you can't remember the operator for the range variable. It should be in here somewhere. There it is, down over here. This is the range variable. So that's how we're defining how many times this loop is going to operate. All right, so now I want to set up a value for the square root, but I want the next higher number. So I'm gonna call this my check val max what I want to check against. And this I'm going to have equal to, let me go to programming, and I'm going to use the seal function. If you're not familiar with the seal function, let me go to my functions tab and show my functions and then scroll down over here. Here's a group for truncation and round off. And the seal will just return the next higher integer greater than the number that it is comparing. And so I'm going to use this seal function and you can either type it in directly or uh, click on it in here. Then we can put in the argument that's going to go to it. Be aware there's a second seal function with a capital C. And then this one I use a lot for engineering calculations because it will allow you to specify multiple. So for example, I could say, hey, give me the next higher number in increments of 0.25. Like I want the next higher dimension in increments of a quarter inch. And be aware that you can also use units with these different functions and it'll actually resolve units. So let's say that your variable is in feet. Well, you could use as the second value in here, one inch. I want it, the number, even though the variable is in inches, or excuse me, feet, to be rounded up to the next inch. But anyhow, for this seal function, this is going to be, let's see, I want it to go to the square root of the current counter variable. So again, we're, yeah, we have a start number. We're trying to figure out if it is a prime number. Let's say I send it the number uh, 101. Well, if, it's, if 101 is not divisible by anything up to 11, then it's a prime number. So let's put in our counter variable, and here is what we are checking against. And then I'm going to start checking against the number two. So if, some, if something is divisible by the number two evenly, then it is not a prime number. So first we're going to use as our first check value the number two. Again, local assignment operator. And we're going to start checking for against all the numbers from two up to this check value. And this time, instead of using a for loop, I don't know how many times this is going to run. I'm going to use a while loop while some condition is true. And so here's the while operator. Again, just like the for operator, you can't just type it in directly. You either have to click it from the programming group or use the uh, function. All right, so while my check value is less than check val max, and actually this should be less than or equal to, so let me click on it and use the correct one. I don't want it jumping out accidentally too early. Here's less than or equal to, which is control nine on the keyboard. While this number that I'm checking against is less than the counter variable, I want it to do some different checking. So I'm going to do an if statement. And again, I just can't type in if, I have to use if in here. And I really like this example because it allows me to show for loops, while loops, I get to do ifs, I'm using a bunch of different functions. I have a couple more keywords that I'm going to use inside of here. And again, I'm constructing a matrix. Okay, so if I'm gonna use the modulus function. So I'm not sure where it is in here. Let's, we can filter down over here and search for it. 
let me go A to Z. Okay, so the modulus function is this one over here. It returns the remainder after dividing the first input by the second input. So let's use the modulus operator. And the modulus is going to be, I'm going to check to see if the counter, oops, typing in the wrong area. Let's type over here. If the counter modulus the check value, if that is equal to zero. So let me move my cursor out over here. I'm going to go to my operators. This is the comparison equals to, not the regular equals to. If this modulus is equal to zero, well, then this is not a prime number. So I need it to get out of the current loop. If it is not if the modulus is zero, it's not a prime number. I want it to get out of the current checking and jump to the next number in the counter. So in order to have it break out of here, well, that's the break operator. So I'm going to go to programming down over here and choose break. And this way it gets out of it. And I want it to perform other actions if this is not true. So I'm positioning my cursor over here and I'm going to add in another line. And this is going to be my else operator. Let me go to programming and type in else. These are the things that I want it to do if the modulus is not equal to zero. Well, then what I want it to do is another check. Let's do another if statement. I want it to see if we're at the check value being the maximum. If our check val is at the maximum of the check value. That means that it is a prime number. If this is equal to, again, I'll do the comparison equal to, if we're equal to check val max, then what I want it to do is take this counter number and add it as the next uh, value in my matrix. So let's do results and then matrix operator index. I want this to be assigned, and I'm going to just use the right arrow on the keyboard to position over here. I want to use the local assignment operator. Oops, it's under programming. Local assignment operator. I want to add the current number that we're checking against in the for loop to my matrix. And the next action that I want to do is I want to increment my index for the vector that I'm creating. I said matrix, actually. it's A vector is a matrix. It's just a matrix with a single column. So let's increment our index variable. Index, we want to increase that by 1 plus 1. All right, so now after it does this while, or after it does this if stuff over here, we want it to increment the check value that it is checking against. So let's see, where do I want that be? I want that to be at this level. Yeah, still within the while. The last thing I wanted to do in the while step is to increment the check value. So check val. Local assignment operator, this is going to be equal to the check val plus one. And the weird thing is, I've always sucked at computer programming. So uh, the fact that I can do this is a testament to the tools inside of MathCAD. All right, so we go through this list, and this will end up creating our matrix of prime numbers between the start and the end. The last thing that we're going to do over here is return that results in uh, vector. So to tell it to return the value, let's go to programming. Here's our return operator inside of here. And we're going to return result, which is our vector of numbers. And one thing is that if you make a mistake in any of the syntax, it'll highlight with that little red outline that it does and tell you the error that you've made in your typing over here so you can fix it. So again, here I have my program name. Here are the arguments that are going to be sent to it. And here we have it creating initially initializing our vector. Then it does the evaluation and then returns the result out of here. Let's take a look at using it. All right, let's do all our prime numbers. 
prime numbers. And I'm going to start with 3. Give me all the prime numbers between 3 and 99 and hit the equal sign. And there we have it over here. So we can see 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, so forth and so on. And you can actually drag this out over here. You can see there's quite a few in here. So it looks like there's a total of 23 within here. You know what? Let me drag this whole thing down to the next sheet. Just using the down key. So that we can get the entire list of numbers on here and expand our vector out. So there we have it. We can see all these different prime numbers between 3 and 99. I think this is kind of cool. We can test out with some other different numbers in here. Just trying to get it all on the sheet. Uh, let's do another one. Let's do all the prime numbers between 100 and 200. Prime numbers 100 to 200 and then equal sign and looks like there's about 20 numbers in that case over there and if anyone is familiar with prime numbers yeah you can see that yeah these these indeed are prime numbers uh, let's see let's go to another sheet just so that I can have a lot of space to work with let's do one last evaluation of the program let's see if what the prime numbers are between 10,000 and 10,100 and hit the equal sign up oh, looks like we our results are being given in formatting that's not conducive to reading the numbers let me change this to decimal wow and then we can see that there's only one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven only like 12 prime numbers uh, between that range over there which is you know Understandable, the higher the numbers get, the more spaced out the prime numbers tend to be. So again, there you have it, the power of using programs inside of PTC MathCAD Prime. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please, please, please hit the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.